Glasgow people. It's the 27th of March. Yesterday was a, a, a very potent day in the uh, Tibetan calendar. So everything we did that was positive was multiplied kind of bucket loads. So I've been thinking about the word meditate. It's very surprising. If you hear the Tibetan word, it's the verb gom, and it translates as literally to familiarize. So, you know, when we hear, oh, go and meditate on impermanence, well, what a Tibetan hears is go and familiarize your mind with impermanence. It suddenly brings it down to earth, doesn't it? I think we have so many cliched and fantasies about what we think meditation is, what meditation is. I mean, in one sense, it doesn't matter. Buddha's not a boss. He's not the creator. He didn't invent med. He's not like got copyright on meditation. People can make up their own. But if you want to know the Buddhist one, you need to be you know, clear about it. So there's two kinds. One is concentration. It actually comes from these amazing Hindus before Buddha. This amazing psychological skill that enables you to focus your mind. 99% of us won't get it in this life unless we give up sex, drugs and rock and roll and go to the mountains, you know, for a couple of years. But we can practice it. And that's just a, that's like a training. And then the, the, the reason you want that is that you, so you can do the second one, which is get insight. Now that, we make fantasy about that too. Insight just means you understand something. So you, you know, you first hear about something, impermanence, then you think, then you reflect on the meaning, and then you experience the reality of it in your meditation, where you're using your mind, you know. So there's, and there's so many ways to do this, but it's very practical. And you don't have to be sitting with your, you know, on your bottom, with your eyes closed and your legs crossed. You can do it while you're at the dishes, on the toilet, walking, if you really understand the proper meaning of it, you know. And it's a job you should do every second, in fact. Of course, you can do it more subtly when you're sitting quietly, but the day-to-day -day job, this is what Lama Yeshi says, is be your own therapist. This is what the job's all about, to sort out and unpack and unravel and deconstruct and then reconstruct this seeming chaos in here because we can be in charge of it, you know. And why should we? So we can be happy and stop suffering, so we can be of use to others. That's the point. Keep going.